Hi, I'm Kyle. I'm Josh. Uh, this is Two Guys, One Car. Welcome to our car. Uh, <laughs> Dude, it starts with Two Guys, One Car. That's no, it's, the name. It should start It's with Welcome to Our Car. No, but it has to start with Two Guys, One Car because that's the name of the thing. Just, you know, just get in the back seat. <laughs> right along with us. <laughs> two guys, one car. Two guys. I like it. Love, I like it. I love that you don't. You didn't. We could start it off with that. I reckon we kick it off as like, dude. It's so. so I, this is the first time we've met, obviously. But the first, the first thing that I noticed was the fact that you've agreed to come on this podcast, and you have no idea what it is. No idea what I'm in for. We'll yep. just go for. What made you say yes? Man, I just. I'm just willing to talk. I, I like. Yeah. I enjoy doing stuff like this. So. Yeah. Yeah. whatever yeah that's sick you awesome. were saying before like uh you want to go and travel and like have opportunities to do stuff but you're just too tied down with footy at the moment yeah yeah 100 percent, man like my plan my plan like after i left school I was, I was looking to go to europe and do like three months over there mm. but um obviously covid kind of interrupted that so ever since then i've just been wanting to travel but with footy like I'm, i get i get like four to six weeks off a year so Dude. I know it's, it, gets, it gets tough. A full time job. And a full time job, and I'm at uni full time as Seriously? well. So, yeah, so it's been. Oh but hold on, how? No. Wait, so hold on. So, w- before we even get in, that <laughs> context, so you're at the moment, you're playing fo- like footy is your dream at the moment. Yeah, yeah. So, so there's uh, like during season, like, like this year, I've four to five nights out the eastern suburbs. So I mm-hmm. travel over um, after work. So I work all day. And then also university uh, two yeah. or three times a week at least mm-hmm. but like that that's actually going in yeah so I'd, wow so uh, add time because i work for my dad i'd be able to work and then go and then finish off work mm-hmm. and then go to training after that so it's fairly busy yeah busy time yeah and what sort of so where are you at with footy at the moment you're playing for the roosters so yeah i finished up with the roosters this year okay yeah um and i've signed a top 30 NRL contract so from next year I go full time from, from November wow yeah, so. so that means top 30 you're in like the 30 man squad yeah so it is like the NRL they have 30 man squad and then a couple of development players and then you go reserve grade so you're like um, in like top tier you, like yeah. if you're playing a game it's NRL oh we be either NRL or I'll be reserve grade reserve. yeah okay yeah. Yeah. damn yeah. so you could potentially have your NRL debut in 2023 that's, yeah, that's the goal that's, that's the goal. huge Dude, that is massive how long have you been chasing that dream for Mate, forever since I was a little kid. Like um, I didn't think I was going to get there, but hopefully, it looks like we're on the right path. So yeah, that's, see how we go. that's wild because we did a pod two weeks ago <laughs> talking about childhood dreams, just like us two, mm. discussing like how most of us have them, and then at some point they kind of just fizzle out yeah, and we just fall just into weird. what it is. But like you've clearly had that and yeah. continued it through. When I was at Terrace Public School, it was my dream. But I was only there for Kindy and One, and I mm. still remember that was my passion, like rugby wow. league. So. Yeah, and a lot of kids, like especially like growing up here, like in New South Wales, like rugby league is a massive sport. Yeah, yeah. Um, and all of us watched it, and all of us as kids, like you know, we all wanted to play. Yeah. Um, yeah, rugby league. And that just fizzles out for ninety nine percent of people. Yeah. No, and the fact that it carried on, what, what do you, what would you attribute attribute that to? The fact that it's held on this long. I it's probably know. a big answer, but I went to like, I went to like a school where rugby rugby union was the main the main sport. So I had St Augustine's okay. College in Brookvale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had to. I had to play rugby at, for the school. Like, I was kind of mm. forced to. Yeah. Because you have to play. It's, like, mandatory to play sport yeah. there. Hey? Yes. Yeah. But to be able to play rugby league, you had to play rugby union for the school. So, for me, it kept me, like, wanting to play rugby league as soon as I got out of school, do you know what I mean? So, I could just mm-hmm. focus on that. Mm-hmm. Whereas, whilst I was at school, I had to juggle between the two. So, mm-hmm. my passion for rugby league kind of never died because I had a desire to just be able to focus on that. Mm-hmm. But... Yeah, because you were deprived of it in yeah, school. Yeah, school, yeah, like yeah, not, like nothing against the school. Like yeah, it was, just, I had awesome times there, and like rugby, the rugby program. I got to go to Japan and stuff. That was awesome. Oh yeah, I remember how they did that. Yeah, yeah. like that, that was so cool. But mm. I've always just wanted to play rugby league. That's yeah. always been my. Do you found any of the skills from union transfer to league? Hundred percent, hundred percent. Like there's so much stuff in common. Like obviously there's a, a couple of different things like rocks and scrums mm. and lineouts. But I played, I played like inside center in union. So. It transitions to what I play in pretty similar to what I play in league, rugby league, um, which is second row. So mm. just running lines, um, making my tackles and stuff like yeah. that. It's pretty similar. How, how do you think you differentiate from, like, I feel like there's thousands of kids that want to yeah. play in the NRL. And what is it you think that makes you stand out to be able to get to, like, where you are now? Yeah, I wouldn't say I was, like, always the most talented. Like, for me, it was uh, what makes me different to other people would probably be like just wanting it like wanting more and wanting to make it happen like a lot of a lot of people once they get to 18 like once they leave school 
like obviously like dreams like going and traveling and partying all take over and for me i had to i had to kind of push them aside like we spoke about earlier mm. and, um and i just focus on the one the one dream which was making it so you'd almost say if you were putting the word it'd be like dedication yeah dedication and sacrifice really mm. i had to I have I still I still struggle with it sometimes it's sacrificing things like missing at the moment it's missing my mate's 21st birthday it's like really close friends because I like especially like June July I had games on the Sundays mm. so they were all my mates were out enjoying themselves and I had to just be at home wow yeah. it's tough but the boys understand so mm. they all understand and the payoff is worth it yeah in the end hopefully hopefully yeah still got a long long road yeah. to go but it's got to keep working hard mm. yeah definitely what what gave you that mindset from that age? Because so many people, when you get to 18, all these freedoms and opportunities like open up for you, people just dive into them. Yeah. But for you to know that that is going to pull you further away from your dreams and you're like, no, I'm going to sacrifice yeah. all these fun times to like get the rest that I need so I can perform as best as I can on Sunday. Yeah. What about you like bred that into you? Like what about your life? I'm not, I'm not too sure. Like I'll, I won't tell a lie, I, I, I do get the chance to go out and enjoy myself at times, mm-hmm. but it's more picking the right moments. Mm. It, like, I'm obviously not going to go out before a game or the Friday before a Sunday game. I just That's just for me, it just, I don't know, I don't want to let my teammates down. I feel like if I'm, if I'm there to do a job, I have to get the job done right. Mm. But um, what, what was the question? Was it like, like what, what about your life has sort of bred that? So you have that ability to sacrifice and probably probably my dad has always taught me that if you if you've dedicated yourself to something then make sure you do it you know what i mean okay. make sure you've, your mind's set on doing a job mm. so it's like almost integrity self-respect yeah. 100%. commitment 100 mm. percent. not letting my teammates down and stuff like that so. yeah yeah teamwork what is what is that for you and obviously like rugby is a, a huge team sport yeah. Do you find you work well in teams? Do you find you're more of a natural leader or yeah, a quieter well, one? Or I was actually the captain of the Jersey Flex side this year. Wow. Um, for me personally, I believe it actually makes me like play better. So it brings the best out of me, the leadership, I, I feel personally. As a kid, I was, I know, I played my best footy when I was just, like the captain. I don't know yeah, why, okay. but I've always, I've always felt it just make, like, yeah, it makes me, I don't know, I, I don't know how to explain it. Just. Taking that, on responsibility. Yeah, it gives yeah. you that extra, like, that extra need to go hard for your teammates, you know right. what I mean? Because you're the one putting on a show for everyone else. Just trying to get the job done. That's mm. the main thing. Mm. Do you find you're quite a vocal leader or are you just more lead by example? Yeah. No, I'm, I struggle. I'm not, I'm not a very big talker. Like, um, funny story, like, before the game, I used, like, when I'm not, like, captain, I'm just focusing on the, on the job, like, playing mm. footy. But I actually get more nervous as captain for the pre-game speech than I do for the actual game. Oh shit! So, wow. so for me, yeah, um, I'm not the best, not not big on speaking, but leading from actions, and mm. I, I think I do that most yeah. of the time. Yeah, that's crazy, and like, because leadership is a lot, a lot can a lot of people attribute, obviously, like your chat, um, especially in sports, to leadership and yeah. um, like using words to get in your teammates' heads and yeah. psych them up. But that's so cool that it's. I feel like that's a real pure leader in terms of like you're not using artificial words you're actually just leading by example yeah well i say i say i've actually spoken to a couple of boys and I'll, like I, I, I questioned them i put it to them because i didn't want i didn't want, i want to know how how they saw me as a leader okay yeah and i was like yeah i, I spoke to them like um, i know i'm not the biggest talker like like do the boys like this is my close mates in the team mm-hmm. do the boys like, respect me and they're like mate when you talk they listen so mm-hmm. the words i do say to them Get across. Yeah, it's like you're not just using words to fill. It's like the words that you actually say are very intentional and very purposeful. Because sometimes if you speak too much, the words just go out the back mm, door. So. For sure, especially if you can't back it up on the field. On the field I think that's yeah. the most important aspect of it is how you perform on the field. And yeah, like I haven't seen you play, but I assume based off what you're saying, it's just a lot of sacrifice, a lot of dedication. Like mm. you're putting in the hard yards when everyone's heads are down, your head is up, trying to lift them up. Trying so, them up, yeah. and I think those qualities really translate. And I like can speak to playing in teams and like seeing players like you in that sense where it's like damn those guys are just beasts yeah. like i admire them i look up to them yeah 100 mm. yeah. with um like with all this like getting to this point now what what, what as a um as a child like and through to now like what has what, what your circle been like and how has that influenced you so the circle around you yeah. a close circle i'll start with my friends like i've always had like I moved, like when I was a young kid, I had great friends up here at Northern Beaches Christian mm. School. Like, so you went through? Did you go? So you did all of your high schooling through St Augustine's? Through St Augustine's, I moved oh, yeah. there in Year Seven. But um, prior to that, I was 
started off at Terry Hills and then Northern Beaches. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So I've still I still got like three or four mates from Northern Beaches mm-hmm. that are really close, like probably like closer than most of my friends at St Augustine's. But then yeah, well. once I moved to St Augustine's, we've got a really good group of like 20, 25 of us that we're still Sick. in contact and go out when we when I can. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, they they um how would I they're very supportive. You know what I mean? Like they've always like like I explained earlier missing out on their 21st they can understand that um mm. they can like some people might get salty that you don't turn up but most of the boys are like understanding that i've got something to achieve and mm. chasing and then i know my family's always been a massive part like they're always at my games like i'm not just talking about mum and dad like grandma gra- uh, grandpa all my all my wow. siblings they, they all turn up so mm. it all, almost gives me extra motivation to like keep keep going and mm keep the dream alive so isn't it amazing how and i've like had this before as well but just someone that you a loved one of yours or someone showing up how good that is for you it means so much to me yeah Yeah, and it's just as simple as them showing up and taking some of their time devoting it to you yeah to come support you and even even my friends come like i can't thank them enough Mm because like like most of my games are pretty far away and if they they turn up it's half their day gone so yeah yeah wow it means so much to me yeah do you think it would have been possible without that support network to get to where you are i definitely definitely think it would have been a lot harder like i know i've got some like some of the boys at the roosters um they move over from new zealand or from, come down from wow. queensland and they're all by themselves wow. so it, it can be really tough for them mm. like um some of them find it too hard and they go, they go back home and i can completely understand that because they don't have anyone mm. around them but um yeah, I, it would definitely make it harder without without mm. it. So I mm. can't can't thank my family and friends enough for being so supportive. That's sick. At what point did you start to think, oh, like this could actually happen? Like, were, were you playing as a young kid, always having that dream, but never, always in the back of your mind, like, oh, I don't know if it's going to happen. Like, was there a point where you're like, oh, I actually am very good at footy and I could make it in the NRL? To be honest with you, it probably wasn't till this till this year, the start of this year, that um. I actually thought I could play NRL. I haven't played it obviously yet, but now I believe I can. Um, mm. I always knew that I always wanted to be an NRL player, but um, in the back of your mind, you're always like, will, will it really happen? But um, yeah, there's always going to be doubt. You're yeah. always going to be questioning yourself. It's like, and then like the start of this year, um, started off really well. And then obviously got some, some interest from other clubs and that. And, once I once I knew that they they wanted me, that they, they kind of mm. kicked a, a bigger fire in me that mm. I can actually achieve this achieve this dream. Yeah, yeah, well, it breeds confidence into you. If there's somebody telling you <clears throat> like we th- we want you, we think you can play, it's mm. like oh, damn, mate, I can do this. Yeah, mm. I met up, I met up with Phil Gould. You know Phil. Gould, yeah. 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 The cafe holy shit i'd be like i know bro. That's, that would that would have been a reality check. i full walked in i'm like man it's phil gold <laughs> <What am I laughs> like, yeah <laughs> and then like that was crazy and then yeah from there man just got so much confidence this year and just want to keep it going what was the meetup for just yeah. to talk about um potentially going there um to the panthers uh to the bulldogs, to oh, the bulldogs. Okay. yeah so that was he, he was at the Pan- panthers but now he's at the dogs okay um, yeah probably trying to do similar to what he did at Penrith. Um, mm. They gone pretty well. So, mm, yeah, yeah. Um, but no, that was that was so amazing. And then I met up, met up with some like the Bulldogs coach at the time, and um, it was just like I was kind of like in awe, like just can't believe mm. it was happening. Yeah. yeah, a bit like holy shit. And then also like like we were just talking about the confidence of you being like, yeah. I am this person that I want to be. That's, you know, that's like, yeah, that's yeah. Affirming. Mm. What was what was the dream club as a kid? That you wanted to play for well i'm a manly i'm from manly mm. so yeah it's tough but um i was always a manly like a manly supporter but now um mate any any club that's willing to believe in me like the, the bulldogs have shown i can't wait to get over there and show that's them what awesome. i have yeah mm. that's cool does it does it change at any point from like a hobby and a love to a job do you think obviously you haven't played on arrow mm. yet so you don't know what that's like but what are your expectations like, yeah do you think it will eventually turn into like this is a job or do you think it'll always be like i just i'm so grateful that i get to do what i love every single day yeah well i think it's only going to easier to love from here like i know mm. they say like um a lot of people do consider it just a job mm. but for me i've done like the hard yards of working full-time and then also going to training driving driving so far like to the eastern suburbs every, like, every night pretty much 
Mm. So now it's just going to be to be able to make it full time. It's just going to increase my love for it. I feel. I feel. Mm. Little, yeah. Do you think? Do you think that plays that the fact that you've done that grind now? Do you think that plays like that plays into you now having appreciation for just doing yeah. just just playing footy? Because you know maybe some. I'm not speaking for anyone, but maybe some people may get given stuff so that they can focus on their footy before they get these big contracts. Yeah. So maybe they don't have that yeah. most appreciation. Yeah, well, some some people get straight into the system from 17 to 16, exactly. 17. That's true. Yeah, for me, I had I was I was at one point starting work at 3 a.m., <laughs> going to the gym at Eastern Suburbs at 5.15, driving back, working the whole day, and going back out for training, so like fuck me. Oh my goodness, that's that savage. was that was 2020 at uh, yeah. t- under 21's preseason. See, that's dude, that's the type of shit us, though, dude. Yeah. That's the type of shit that's going to build you and like push you. Now, Just makes me appreciate what I have now. And all the hard things that are going to get thrown your way in this next couple of years, it's like you're going to be able to draw back on those yeah. 3 a.m. mornings. Like, this is what I've been sacrificing yeah. for. 100% and go appreciate what I have now. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And it's just the dream. Like, waking up at 3.30, it was just yeah, it was the cool. dream of I want to play NRL one day and yeah. this is the step to get there, so I'm yeah. going to do it. 100%. Like, I'd go, I'd go to work and work for like two, what, an hour and a, hour and a half? Yeah. Roughly, because we had to sort parcels in the mm. morning, get load my van, and now I go to, to training, and then mm. come back, deliver, wow. go back. Shit, and like, you kind of touched on it before, it was like, because you, like, the work you do, and it was for your dad, you said, yeah, it's like, yeah. it makes it easier, but again, you've put yourself in that situation where I want to work. Yeah, I want, I want, I want, I need to make money. You know? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. like, and you, you've just using your circumstances to the fullest you could, yeah. you know, and that's like, that, that's so cool to see. Mm. Yeah, there's no excuses coming from you, which is no, so cool. I try to, I don't know, like, I, I also love physical fitness, so mm. I train, like, ob- um, now I'm not training with rugby league, so I'm in the gym training. I, I love, um, I love kind of, battling those like mental demons you get when you want to fail like just mm. all the excuses that come into your head mm. I just love um, trying to overcome them because I feel like that resonates and puts it in place for life and, um, mm. yeah it translates to so many more things yeah 100% I, obviously I find it hard sometimes with the studying aspect that's probably where the most excuses because you don't the, the hardest thing with studying and I've been thinking about this a lot recently is like I think and this is actually very simple I don't know I've never thought about it like yeah. this is you the thing with study is you're studying and you get no immediate return. Yeah, It's such delayed gratification because, yeah, say you finished four years of study, then you get into a job, but it's entry level. So it takes so much time for you to actually get to a point where you've made it all worth it. So it could be like seven, eight years. But in that seven, eight years, you've just got to silently struggle without any gain. Mm. Yeah, 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 100%. I mm. guess you could say it's pretty similar to rugby league though. Yeah, true. And With the not knowing. Yeah. Mm. And not only that though, but in your case, it's quite a specific niche where you potentially have this career lined up in footy that like could be quite successful, could be like a, a solid income. And then there's uni and it's like, well, yeah. like what, why am I even trying at this thing? Yeah. I get I get people telling me like, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> stop bothering with uni. But for me, it's just like, I do enjoy my course. I'm studying a uh, degree in criminology, criminal okay, justice. Yeah. So I've always been passionate, like a, a side passion in the rugby league, um, that, kind, that kind of aspect. So, mm-hmm. um, I, I, I don't see why I can't juggle both. Like, yeah. obviously, rugby league's my number one goal, and that's mm. that's for me. Um, but there is life after rugby league, mm. so just gotta gotta have something to. God, that's that's so enough that you have that yeah. before you're even in it. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. fact that you see that so like you see so many players yeah, okay. go in, make a lot of money, come out, and like have no drive, no passion, and no money. Or also don't make a lot of money, or spend the money, or don't yeah. value their yeah. money wisely whilst they have it. Have it yeah. And then they just have to, you see them having to work jobs after rugby league. It's like, after a, like a career of being a gladiator mm. every weekend, Going you should, <laughs> you should, you should have to, you should not have to work yeah. after like a career of just like, ba- like getting bashed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. there's no way you've earned your, t- you've done your time. Like yeah. you should be able to ride off in the sunset when you retire. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> yeah. Everyone should. I, I guess re- regardless of how many years you play NRL, just yeah. even if you're at that level, you just deserve to be able to just do nothing afterwards. Yeah. It takes a fair bit out of you. Mm. Yeah. Couldn't imagine being like some of the blokes finishing up 36, 37, what their bodies would be feeling. Yeah, holy mm. fuck, dude. That's Especially, like 15 yeah. years. Well, how old are you? I'm only 20, yeah. Oh, okay. So you're a few years younger than yeah. us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like think yeah, that's, yeah, yeah fif- that's 15 years yeah. 15, ahead of time. Like, oh, yeah, I know. Mm, that's um, massive. My body's pretty sweet at the moment. Yeah. So <laughs> go a bit to go. <laughs> yeah, you said you like, you like physical health and physical training. Yeah. Um, 
what what about footy scares you in terms of the physical side like long term oh if anything yeah nah probably not like I understand there's a lot of stuff going around about the brain brain injuries now but I think mm. for me I know what I'm signing up to like my love for it is so strong that down the line if that's if that's like word of stuff like that were to happen to me I kind of just you're okay with that yeah it's I, justified yeah it's like any it's like anything really there's risks there's risks with every any mm. everything you do mm. like any like bad thing can bad things can happen anywhere i admire that I mean, perspective i think a lot of the, the way i see it is through like oh, i love mma yeah, yeah. and i watch that and <clears throat> hearing fighters talk about it in that way too is like yeah. Look, like we're putting our bodies on the line, but it's what I want to do, and I can't fight it. It's what I love. Yeah, you can't fight the love that you have for it. Yeah, so, 100%. yeah. Have you had any major injuries from footy? At all? Yeah, well, um, that, that was kind of a roadblock. It kind of made me um, appreciate the sport. Uh, so when I was sixteen, um, kind of I was playing how mats, which was um, yeah. like under sixteen yeah. statewide competition, and then. Um, so it was like a catch-up game, and then yeah. so we weren't actually meant, meant to be playing. It was on like a Wednesday night, and then took, took the ball up in the first six, six or seven minutes, and my legs just went out, out from under me, and oh, shit. Bro, I broke broke my tib and fib. Oh, I broke three places on the tib and four places. On Wait, was it full clean snap? Yeah, so oh. my, my ankle was actually facing the other way. Wait, how? You just I got tackled, and someone must have taken my legs out by accident, no complete way. accident. Um, so I was out. Fuck, for, I was out for nearly two years. Like, Holy moly! So, what actually? Uh, I had three-hour surgery. Got two plates, twenty. Tw- uh, two plates, twenty screws. What leg? Left. Left. Dude, leg. bionic. Oh my yeah. goodness! Got a scar there still. Um, and then took me twelve months to recover from the first time. Then I came back. Um, got all the sorry. Got all the screws out. Came back. Went to Japan. Played rugby for school. And yeah. then uh, mm-hmm. got two games over there. So it was all sweet. And then my first game back in Australia playing rugby, it broke again. Like, no, no way. Not, not as bad as the first time, but I, I broke my, but, my tip again. The uh, same leg. Same leg. Arguably worse because think you've done it once and then you do it twice, the confidence yeah. drop. You'd be like, I was shattered. Fuck. I remember just thinking like, is my, am I, am I going to actually be able to yeah. play like play again? Like I've, I've worked so hard to get back to where, I've, where I thought I was sweet mm. and it went again like, like that so I was, I was worried at the time like mm. like that I was definitely a roadblock but um mm. thankfully since then um it's stronger than ever and haven't had any problems and yeah it's another cookie in the jar it's like yeah. the adversity right like yeah. you had you had so much time to think about how this dream wasn't going to work yeah, and then you to go out and to defy it and like yeah put like to still stick with it I've got to thank probably we've got to thank my brother for that because okay. uh, my other brother Luke who um he's probably he probably led me into the passion of physical fitness because okay. he, he has a he has a gym now. Um, okay. But at the time, he he pretty much said, "Mate, you'll be sweet," and um, got me in the gym. Went, as soon as I, I was actually on my ha, like had my brace on, and he had me in the gym doing upper body just to keep me motivated, keep me going. And mm. he's he's taken me through the whole journey. To be honest, he's got Shit. me got me to where I am. That's wow. so cool. Yeah. What a legend, mate. Yeah. yeah, I can't thank him enough. It comes back to that circle thing. Hey, 100%. it's like having the right circle. Yeah. Percent. Yeah. Was there when the leg breaks happened? Was it more? a lack of confidence in oh I can't trust my body or was it a mental like oh I don't think I'm cut out for this it was it was probably not knowing whether or not the leg was right like whether it would yeah. ever be right again because mm-hmm. I was like the, the surgeon the first time told me like mate this isn't like this isn't not like a rugby injury like this is what we see with motorcycle accidents whoa yeah, fuck so me it was like <laughs> at the time I was like man like <laughs> what's going on and then he I was like mate I want to I want to play and I was 16 I was like man look, I'm only 16 I can't can't give it up he's mm. like yeah mate we'll do everything we can so he got it he got oh, it right to his awesome. I actually think I'm gonna my mum actually said I should send him a message and let him know about where you are yeah, now sure. dude for sure to thank him so I'm 100% so gonna do that because I can't appreciate how how good he was mm. to motorcycle oh, accident that's insane <laughs> that's crazy and the weight of doctor's words is so much greater mm. than yeah. like than they could than they could imagine because yeah. they're just yeah. saying because it's that's just fact and the them, way we right? see them is like whatever they say is like we just take it as so much yeah. because they're a doctor yeah, we but, just take it as gospel yeah. they know everything yeah, yeah. i'm like oh my goodness mm. this is wild yeah, damn so what did you, what was your like rehab was it yeah. mostly with your brother in his gym yeah so i had i had like Built myself up, so I put 20 kilos on the first year. 
No. Damn, how much do you weigh? I'm 100 kilos at the moment. Dude, yeah. yoked. Got to yeah, get, yeah. probably put a couple more kilos on because I'm playing against pretty big boys. Yeah. Quite <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I did like a lot of rehab. I was down at Nar- the Narrabeen Institute of Sport down there. Mm. Um, uh, Tim, the physio down there, he, he helped me so much. And then Luke got my upper body. And once, once we got through the initial rehab stage um, and then we were back to running, um, it was mostly Luke from there. And then when I broke it the second time, um, the footy cl- North, North Sydney Footy Club helped me out a lot as well with their wow, physios there and that. So, mm. yeah, really. Um, and just says it's it's time, right? And just like, what, what did you take? Did you take any lessons from that time you had to spend in rehab? Yeah, like, it just probably made me appreciate what I had before I was injured. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, probably just, to be honest, it probably made me love the game even more because wow. I realized what I was missing out on. Mm. So, yeah. dude, yeah, you have a choice. Like, you had two choices yeah. and you took the right one. Then it makes me appreciate it now when I'm healthy Playing. free some some weeks and be like oh this is the footy grind gets can get to you but you look back and go mate look where i was in the position i was in be thankful for what you have for now. sure and think about what it would be like if it wasn't there i always mm-hmm. it's such a small scale thing but anytime i ever get a blocked nose and i can't breathe through it like as soon as i get sick i go oh dude. like as soon as i get a little cold i'm like what would it be like if i didn't have dude yeah because you, you never you never think about breathing with a clear nose but even now it's conscious i'm just actually just take it for granted don't you just, yeah. breathing through my nose is so nice mm. and it's the same thing you don't know what you have till it's gone so it's gone 100 percent, 100 percent. yeah what a what about the uh roosters did you like in terms of their facilities the way they ran their club like management people yeah that the the whole roosters organization is amazing like they they look out for every single player that comes in, whether you're not that talented or you are talented. Like everyone's, everyone's kind of treated equally. So that's impressive. Yeah, all the, all the coaches and stuff. Like they just make, they want to make you a better player and more importantly, a better person. So, um, no, nah, the Roosters Club was awesome, and I can't thank them enough because they've they've helped me get to where I'm at now. Mm. So that's cool. What was the travel like in with them in terms of like in that comp that you were playing? How far did you travel? Travel, yeah. So Jersey Flag, there's teams. Um, most most of the teams are New South Wales, like New South Wales, but um, there's Canberra also and Melbourne. Mm. So at times we fly down on the day and play, and then come back Shit. on the same day. So that's a big day, wow. and then Canberra is also a, a bit of a bus trip. But the NRL also has Queensland teams, so that'll um, oh, it's only going to increase travel. Mm. Does that excite you? Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. That's yeah, like it's part of the dream, really. That's mm. yeah do it on a bigger bigger stage <clears> yeah. so. and you were speaking about like you mentioned you have a partner yeah like what does she do and what? mate she's a massive supporter like yeah. she's been so good to me um she was there she wasn't there for the first leg break but she was there for the second okay. and she was so supportive um and then she's at every game she actually loves photography so she takes photos of all the boys all the boys love her because she's taking photos of all the, yeah, yeah. All the, like footy boys they photos yeah it's the ego yeah 100 100 but um nah she's she loves the the benefits that come with it but like um getting to come to awards nights and stuff like that she yeah she loves that stuff which i can understand but, um yeah. but i can't thank her enough because she's like she goes back to my, my circle she's mm. part of it and She's um she does a lot. For so me. how long have you guys been together for? Five years. Wow, that's yeah. a long time. Five years. I know. Yeah. Well, yeah. So yeah, we've been we've been like year ten. I started dating okay. her. Yeah. Um, ever since then, she's she's been by my side and yeah, kind of. That's so awesome. Can't thank her enough. How do your how do your dreams like align and? Yeah, we. She um, she's she's a horse girl, so she loves horse riding and that. Yeah. Um, but she she's it's kind of it's funny that she's she never she wasn't. She didn't even know what rugby league was before she met me, but oh, now she shit. loves it. Wow, yeah, yeah. loves it. Um, That's so beautiful. Yeah, yeah. but I like that you were the gateway yeah. to that. For her. Yeah, what well, I have the same passions to her in in like in terms of like I enjoy living on like her dream. Her dream is to live on a horse property. That's that's her dream. So I I I love where I'm living now. Yeah, and like that's also one of my dreams to one day be successful enough to be able to um, make that happen. Yeah, obtain mm. a place like that. Yeah, 100%. And, um, I know, I just like, like a living on property. It just gives me, I know, it just gives me space to be able to be myself, you know what I mean? Um, mm. Clarity. 
It's good. Yeah. Mm. I th- everything you, like, we've compounded some information on you now, but I think everything you're saying is like, looking, like Josh said earlier, there's no excuses and you're looking to better yourself over time. 100%. Even that, like the in terms of the property and stuff, I find that so awesome that you're thinking about that now because you know that it's going to benefit your well-being and stuff. Do, do you, how do you find the split between keeping your physical health intact and then also your mental health? Yeah. I think it, do you, do you, sorry do you concentrate on one of them more than the other or do you how do you approach the split I think it comes hand in hand to be honest for mm-hmm. me I'm mentally like best mentally when I'm physically like at your best okay. yeah, yeah at my yeah, best yeah. Um, so that's that's why I train every day um, I try eat well um, for me because like as soon as I start not training it can get a bit get a bit get a bit it's like a slippery slope yeah, yeah mm. but not like uh, I'm personally lucky. I haven't battled from depression or anxiety or anything like that. But you can, like, for me, I'm in my best frame of mind when I am um, physically fit. Yeah. yeah and would you say, yeah, is there a point in the season where you feel you're physically at your best? Because obviously throughout the season, you're, like, beating your body week in, week out. And I'm sure, like, obviously you're in peak physical shape because you're playing. Yeah. But at the same time, I feel like throughout the season, you probably, like, yeah. are just exhausted. So when would you say you feel like physically at your peak? Probably right at the end of pre-season coming into the first couple of games. Mm-hmm. There's definitely times during the season where like you're battling the whole week just to get your body right for the next game. So like that, I struggle sometimes to like, like I don't get to train as much sometimes during the season. So that can, um, that can be hard at times, but you'd be, you'd be feeling the best physically probably coming into round one before the start of the okay. season yeah. after pre-season because pre-seasons are it's pretty tough mm, yeah. yeah it's only gonna get tougher now so do they do like just out of curiosity do you like pre-season then you kind of have a rest and then go into your season just so you're like bodies in check or do they just beat you and then put you straight in yeah. <laughs> now nah, it's kind of like it's almost sports science now so yeah, yeah. i haven't done an nrl pre-season yet so true i've done a um junior 20, 21s mm. i've done a new south wales cup which is reserve grade so. yeah, yeah yeah um but from what I've been told, because I've got friends that have done NRL, and um, it's kind of like you have big chunk of eight, like eight weeks up until Christmas. You mm-hmm. get a little bit of time off during like Christmas over the Christmas mm-hmm. New Year's break, and then it's pretty much full on. Um, and but they also like they're gonna taper it and get yeah, up, yeah, yeah. Levels. Try and time it right. They so you got yeah, once you come and yeah, peak yeah. Mm. So um, then they'll go into the trials and kind of ease off a little bit and coming into there. So there you go. So yeah, they actually are monitoring you and making sure that when you hit round one, you're, you're at your best. Yeah, 100%. Mm. It's, all, it's all sports science based. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. It's really cool to see that, right? Respecting the athletes and like their bodies mm. and like putting you guys at your best. At the Roosters, they, I'm sure every every other NRL club does it now, but they they got trackers on every single player so they know like their, how their heart's tracking. Um, Wait, like at all times? At, at training, yeah. At, oh, like, shit. I thought you meant like... No, no, no. For a second, no, I thought you meant no, like... No. Every hour of the day, I was like, "That's awesome." <laughs> no, no training, so they, they yeah. monitor everything. It's all, it's all down in uh, right. to the individual yeah. player. And what does training look like in terms of? Obviously, like it's your job, so you get employed by them. Like you sign a contract and you're employed. But if you're sick or you can't train, is it like a sick day or like what's kind of the expectation? Good, good yeah, question. That's a, that's a good I've question. always been so curious. Yeah, yeah, I actually don't know how to answer because I haven't, um, I haven't actually experienced NRL preseason yet. So or uh, being in in the NRL system, so um, for like 21s reserve grade, like I, know, I try to pride myself on if, if I have a little bit of a sniffle on that, I'd still go like still yeah. go to training. But you players would like you can take the day take off. the day off. Like mm-hmm. if you, obviously if you're really sick, you have to. You have to. Mm-hmm. You know? I feel like that just speaks to your leadership. The idea of just showing up, even if you show up and don't do anything. Yeah. Yeah. Even if you're just there. Yeah. Well, if I'm really crook and I don't want to get the other boys sick, then yeah. I won't. Yeah, come, yeah. You know what I mean? It's kind of a fine line between. Mm-hmm. Um, choosing when you should go and when you yeah. when you actually can't physically go. Yeah, so. yeah, that is so. funny, hey, because you because you're contractually employed, so it's kind of like yeah, there's no like you don't you're not getting paid like sick days. It's like I've never thought of it like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, you actually I should probably have a look and see. Yeah, yeah, see what yeah, it, it looks like. Yeah, I haven't actually yeah I haven't seen it. I haven't. That's a good question. I haven't actually looked into. Mm. So yeah, I'm sure it just came on your desk and you just signed it. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh like, my I mean, goodness. I mean, if we talk again contract. in a couple of years. I'll probably have the answer for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. What, so what is your contract in terms of length? Uh two. I've got two years. Okay, is that yeah. pretty standard for someone joining NRL? Uh, I think so. It just depends on the player and um. Like contracts kind of range from one to can go up to five, and one or two players 
bit bit longer, but mm. um, two to three years is kind of the standard yeah. length of contracts in the NRL. Yeah. 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 How do you find the the losses affect you mentally? Yeah. So this year I didn't really. We we're kind of lucky. We didn't have too many losses. Um, but I'm bad. Like I take losses pretty bad. Um, mm. I don't know. I just I try to like I take time to actually think about what's what's happened, mm. but then after the day after I try to flush it and just forget about it and move on to what's next like you don't really want to be around me after after a big loss you know, but, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah but I've got like a principle with myself that the day after I flush I, I review the game and then after that I flush it flush it okay. yeah. that's cool that's a good practical approach in the sense of right we lost for a reason that reason I can look at things and see what was mm. in our control yeah. mm. learn from it grow from it and but, feel the pain of losing. Probably. Yeah, feel the pain because that's going to motivate you to yeah, be yeah. better next time. But then not to sit in it because it's going to stop you from performing. Yeah, 100%. So that's a that's a cool approach. Do you think that was something you always had the ability to kind of have that procedure where you like analyze and then flush it? It's kind of. I, I, I started like when I went to I, I played Harrow Mats and SG Ball and mm-hmm. Jersey Flake for. North Sydney Bears, like a great club, yeah. great people. But well, so is that where you played with Lennox? Yeah, I played yeah, with okay. Lennox. Yeah, so yeah. um, great club, awesome people. Mm-hmm. Um, but their juniors are known to struggle quite a bit. So okay. I kind of I didn't get used to losing, but we lost a fair few games there. So it made me appreciate the wins, but also taught me um, taught me how to take losses, like wow. and, and learn. And um, from there, like. This year, I had a lot. More, we had a lot more success as a team at the Roosters, um, but when the losses came, I kind of knew how to knew how to handle it and be mm. you've been there, done practical that. towards it. Mm. Yeah. So. Mm. And when you said you don't take losses well, was that in a sense of you're just really competitive and love to win, yeah. and you just hate losing, or is there something deeper there? Yeah, it probably just comes down to the pressure I put on myself, to be honest. Because um, if we if we lose and I haven't had a haven't had, I've had a shocker or a bad game. Like, and just the the pressure I put on myself it just all builds up. But um, that's probably yeah, that's probably the main thing. It wouldn't wouldn't be really much anything like deeper. It would be mm-hmm. be like wanting to win, and my own my own personal standards I set for myself, and not not meeting them it would be the the reason I'd. Mm. Well, winning correlates with like success and you doing yeah. better and yeah. getting yeah. further. There's times where I win and I've had a bad game and I'm still like. Sort of mad at yourself yeah just no, I don't sh- I don't show yeah, yeah, it yeah. but um, you're still not, critical you don't enjoy critical yeah I'll go yeah I'll go home and be critical just just to myself I wouldn't mm-hmm. show it around the boys because like, we just won had a good win you yeah you got to celebrate yeah. a win 100 yeah. percent. I think that's great that you can do that where most people when you win as you said it correlates like success and winning and most people would just feel good after it but the fact that you can like have the win but still be critical on yourself shows that you're constantly looking to get better and better mm-hmm. and better well, I know there's heaps there's heaps more I can improve on in my game and I just I just want to um, make sure I can be the best player that I possibly mm. can be who were um who were your heroes in the NRL when you were younger well I was as I mentioned earlier I loved Manly so mm. um, Brett Stewart Jamie mm. Lyon Anthony Watmo yeah. Um, yeah. pretty lucky and K- Kieran Foran yeah. 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 pretty lucky because um Anthony Watmo now trains at my brother's gym. Wow. Shit. So I've become friends with him, I'd say, recently. Yeah. Like, not close friends, but on yeah. speaking terms, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, and then Kieran, I work at the pizza shop on Sunday nights as well. Um, yeah. Just to help Steve out, Stone Edge Pizza, you know yeah. that one? Yeah. So I just do deliveries. And um, he's uh, one of the employees there is Kieran Foran's, like Kieran Foran's, their stepdad. And then oh, also, okay. Yeah. And also my. In my team at the Roosters is another um, one of Kieran Foran's stepchildren. Wow! But he doesn't live here; he lives up the coast. So, yeah. so through that, we kind of. Yeah. But I haven't actually met Kieran personally. But yeah. Um, tech, we've texted on Instagram, and that he's, he seems like a good bloke. Mm. But, um, just cool how, like, these are my heroes growing up, and I'm kind of in contact with them. You know what I mean? That's yeah. Awesome. Do you feel like? Have you heard of imposter syndrome? No, I haven't. No. So it's oh. pretty much where you like basically feel like an imposter in your life. So it generally happens for people that are like quite successful or doing something. In your case, you're like talking to all these successful NRL players that you once saw as heroes. And then it's like, oh, I feel as though I'm an imposter in my own life. 
Yeah, okay, I see what you mean. Yeah, so the feeling of like, this isn't real, like, oh my yeah. goodness. And people talk about it. Yeah, people talk about that, like being something they have to deal with, like yeah. as they get more and more success, because they start to realize like, why am I here? I shouldn't be here type thing. What am I doing here? Like, yeah, yeah, I'm just, crazy. I'm just Jake Preston, like, yeah. who am I? But it's yeah. like, now people are looking at you and like, he's my hero. Yeah, mm. no, hopefully, hopefully we can make that happen down the track. Just mm. got to keep working, <laughs> but yeah. we'll see what happens. Mm. Just... Yeah, the work ethic is not. Yeah, it's very admirable. Um, and I think it, it does speak to just the fact that if you have a dream and you put your mind to it, you can succeed, right? And I love your point on how you didn't naturally have that much. You weren't the most talented, but all this sort of success so far is coming from your drive and willingness to do so. And it, uh, like I, um, when I was younger, used to do like some pathway stuff with Rugby Union too. Um, and... What I saw, even from a young age, especially, is it is a very different sport, as you would know. I played down at... Did you play at Rats? Uh, yeah, 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 played yeah, Ratties, played yeah. Well, yeah. Um, like, with, uh, like, especially with the Rugby Union, like, a lot of the school system it goes through private schools. It is a bit more of a, like, a higher-end sport, and you do start to see, like, from a young age, people not really respecting it for what it's worth yeah. and the opportunity they've been given. Yeah, um, and to see someone like you going through, like, obviously a different sport, but similar to... And actually having that, I feel like that's got to correlate to success. Yeah, um, do you have any? Do you have any like the way that people approach the game and the way they like live their life playing the game? Do you have any heroes in that aspect? Like, I think Sonny like, Bill Williams was like the ultimate athlete. Like, okay. Yep. Um, I've read his book and that, and just how he like prepared himself mm-hmm. physically and mentally, and how everything it was everything was towards performing at the highest possible mm-hmm. level. So. In terms of that, yeah, probably something. Yeah, the things he achieved is insane as well. Like, he was, he was an NRL star. He was an All Black, won two World Cups. Yeah, I think, I think so. Yeah, two. Yeah. F- f- uh, 2011, 2015, now he's boxing. Boxing. He's boxing Mark Hunt, you know that? Yeah, yeah. no yeah. way. Yeah, yeah that's That'd insane. be interesting. He should yeah. win. Wow. He should win that. Yeah, if Galen can beat him, I think so. Yeah, Sonny, but come on. Like, it's Sonny Bill Williams. Look at him. Like, <laughs> wild. Do you, have you heard of Cam Haynes? No, no. He's an oh, American right. guy. You need to read his book. Yeah, okay. It's like the what you're talking about. Your like kind of your come up in terms of no talent, just hard work. Yeah. That is Cameron Haynes. He's an American mm-hmm. bow hunter, like oh, one yeah. of the best bow hunters in the world. Runs ultra marathons. Just, <laughs> just a savage dude. Yeah. You honestly, you would love his book. Yeah, check it out. 100%. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But all those type of the the core things you're talking about really like align yeah. with the way he sees stuff. Well, was it, when I was in year year seven, I remember like. It's pretty defining, like for me. But like I know I was only young, but mm. with the rugby rugby school thing, I remember I got put in like I, I was uh, my goal was to be in the A's, and yep. I got put in the B's, and then I eventually ended up in the C's. Wow! So wow. at the time, I was like, "Oh, look at me! Like I've got this dream, and I'm, mm. I'm look, in the C's. I'm in the, I'm in the C's. C's. It was yeah. actually it was like five or six teams. So, mm. and then yeah, from there, like because I just wanted to work, wanted it so bad, I just worked mm. hard, and eventually starting to look like it's turning out all right and and that coming from i think it is it does speak to that drive like a lot of people like translate that to their life in their maybe 20s or so but you doing that from having that ego shock for even from like a young age you know because you know when you're young like when we're all young if you're put in like a lower team or anything like that it hits you so much harder yeah. than it does when you're in your 20s i took it so hard i remember yeah. i went home and cried I was, yeah <laughs> yeah yeah well, especially if you have that dream dude it's like it's gonna ruin you yeah, yeah. and to yeah. come back from that that's that takes even more effort probably yeah. than what it does from when you're in a year. Yeah. I was going to ask you if you had any like negative references where something happened and it was like, you can't do this. You had somebody telling you you're not going to make it. Obviously the C's is one of those, but were there any, yeah. any people or any situations where it kind of knocked you back down, obviously besides the leg break? Yeah, no, I can't really pinpoint a moment where someone's told me I, I couldn't make it. It was more like maybe, maybe some people are saying like, maybe you should focus on educating yourself mm. yeah, making sure you get an education because like that's just a long long shot dream mm. kind of thing but yeah never really been told mate you can't make it like that's, nah. yeah. that's right. great because i think that's quite rare yeah. in the fact that most people have Someone people knows. telling you that you can't do it yeah. and it always stems out of like jealousy and their own insecurities and stuff but it just speaks to how well you've crafted your circle, yeah, the people in your life. Mm. They're, they're like, yeah, like I said, like, they've been so supportive and they've kind of always just believed in me. You know what I mean? Like, I've, I've kind of always wanted that dream and mm. I know, like, it might look like I wasn't going to get there. Well, I still, I still haven't achieved the dream of making Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but you're on the track. Hopefully, yeah, yeah, hopefully on the right track. And mm. they're, yeah, 
their support has helped helped me so much. Yeah. What what's the what's the dream look like then for you now? It's like it it inceptualized when you're a young kid. Yeah. You're along the path now. You're in um, amidst the journey. Yeah. Where does the end point look like? Like once this dream is fulfilled, what does that look like for you? Uh, career wise with rugby yeah. league. So once the dreams all fulfilled, wh- yeah. where are you at once it's fulfilled? Mate, the old like the old, firstly would be to de- debut, mm-hmm. play, play like, and become a consistent first grader, and then mm-hmm. obviously the the big dreams, Origin and playing for Australia. my playing for my country. Yeah, that's mm. that'd be so that's cool. the, Yeah, that's the, imagine that's the, like, like every chills. Just yeah, the thought yeah. that like imagine just, singing the anthem is it, with the Australian jersey with your family in the crowd. You can't oh see God. him because it's or even Origin. And I'd be yeah. the guy like bragging that I know you. I'm like, yeah, 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 I know yeah, that yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. I went yeah, yeah, to school yeah. with him. I actually have that with a guy who currently plays in the Wallabies. What's his name? Angus Bell. I oh, know. Yeah, yeah. Angus, Angus Bell. He went to Newington. Yeah, yeah. Um, I used to play some footy with him, and I like when he debuted, I was like, holy shit! And I didn't even know. <laughs> Play for the Wallabies. Yeah, he's playing for the Wallabies, and he's massive. I haven't seen the dude in like five or six years, and he's huge. Yeah, one of my good mates, Lungy Gleason, he's in the Wallabies squad yeah, as well. Okay. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. I was yeah. looking like, mate, we were at school like three years ago, and now you're like, actually in the Wallabies squad. Like, so you went to what's school going with on? him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And then well, he's deb- he hasn't debuted yet, has he? He hasn't debuted, but yeah, no. Billy Pollard, I yeah. played a lot of footy with him growing okay. up. Yeah. He he's debuted, and it's just you just look at it like, man, that's crazy. But it just shows you. If you're so, if you want it to happen, you can make it happen. 100%. They're playing for Australia in rugby. Like mm. Billy debuted over in Argentina. I'm pretty sure it was yeah. in Argentina. Like, yeah. that's crazy. Like, it's just it's stuff so you wouldn't cool. believe. Yeah. Yeah. What are like coming to the physical stuff? Like, how did you put on the weight? Like, I'm actually because I every Wait, footy player. What do you mean? We said he put on like 20, 20, 10, kilos. 20 kilos. Oh, like intentionally put on 20 kilos. Yeah. Or just yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. To get a bit bigger. Yeah. yeah. What like. Are you just eating as much food as you possibly can and yeah. training? I, I I put it down probably to training, but also natural, natural just, development. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Was, that was probably that was when I was 16, 17. So probably wouldn't have been 20 kilos if I wasn't training. But mm. um, yeah, I, I was I was training pretty hard and also my physical like natural development. Um, mm. Yeah, back to my brother. He he helped me get my diet like right to put on put on weight. He's probably still into me because at times it can be. My diet cannot be like can be be iffy. Yeah. So, like, what does your diet look like in term if you're in season? Like, what's a typical day in Jake Preston's life? Yeah. So, I'm um, kind of have I wake up in the morning and I have um, a pretty big shake. Like, has three eggs, a uh, handful of blueberries, peanut butter, protein powder, a bit of creatine, a banana. So that's breakfast brekkie. I kind of just drink it and get mm. to work. Mm. Um, and I have a little snack. Just like any anything really, like I eat a lot of chicken, um, chicken and and um, meat like beef, mm. beef and rice, pretty plain. But um, mm. so that's more like more lunch, more lunch sort of meal. And then yeah. dinner, I'm pretty easy. Mum, mum usually cooks cooks something pretty decent, like steak and veggies or something. So it'll be like at home usually. Dinner's pretty secured, like it's at yeah, home. You're not home. cooking for yourself. Yeah. Like it's like that's yeah. Because yeah. I'm still living at home, yeah, so yeah, mum, yeah. like very mm. lucky that mum, mum mm. always cooks pretty. Pretty good feed. So mm. any stuff pre-training, like any snacks. Yeah, or? yeah. Um, usually, like I usually have another banana. Um, protein shake after the gym, o- yeah. always. Um, just whey. Like yeah, just, I, I just yeah. yeah I just, with my, I don't really take many supplements. I'm pretty. I was about to ask you that. Do you supplement at all? Not, not really. Not yeah. really. I just. Is that intentional? Or you just never got into it. Uh, yeah, I, I've always just taken protein and yeah. creatine at times. So, yeah. mm-hmm. um, my game day, my game day. Um, I'm really particular how I am on game day. So that, so my, I have for years, always I wake up and then about, depends what time the game is, but mm-hmm. about four, four and a half hours before the game, I'll have two pieces of toast with um, scrambled eggs. Wow. And how many eggs? Two. Okay, so just yeah. two eggs. I don't, no doesn't matter what time no I'm playing yeah. at. <laughs> so like some days I'll go like hold it, like just having that. And then um, two hours before the game, I'll have a banana and uh, like a, I get a little bucket of almonds. Yeah. Pump them and then just before I run on, I scull a Red Bull. That's really yeah, every that's, game. Yeah. Every, that's that's my day, game day ritual. What the hell? Wow. How long has this been going on for? Uh, probably uh, the last. That's the, the yeah. least four years. And you the can ba- see that scrambled egg thing. Probably since I was about ten. Wow. No way. And you think to the end of your career, like you, yeah, well, yeah, like you don't see it changing. I don't see it changing. I, yeah. Unless, unless like, I get to like the Bulldogs and they tell me that I have to like improve what I eat on the game, which on game day, which is understandable because it probably needs to improve. But that's so funny. What do you find the Red Bull does? Just gets you like I don't know. Woo! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah just give you the people key. pump. They pump pre-workout, but like 
I don't know I just try to avoid that stuff and just just I know Red Bull's not no good for you, but I'm, yeah, yeah, you know, I'm going out to run about seven eight k. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like that, so. yeah. Super high intensity. Yeah, yeah. That's so funny. I find I remember Glenn Stewart came to our school. Yeah, exactly. um, yeah, yeah, back in the day, like year yeah. six, and someone asked him if he's superstitious, and I can't remember what he said, but he said he like had some superstition thing that he did like before every game. Wow, I'm heaps yeah. superstitious. It's yeah. bad. Yeah, because I think it's just because you guys like you guys play for every Sunday or whatever for 80 minutes yeah. like you're consistently doing the same thing so you get into routine mm, yeah. and you would base your like performance off the things you did beforehand and yeah, it gets more big. scientific <laughs> and like yeah. of course and it makes sense because if like we as just humans we love routine so yeah. I know what I need to do for my morning routine to set me up for a great day and when I don't do that thing I'm like oh I know why I, I had a bad day mm. yeah. yeah so it's more People just look at it as like really superstitious, but I think it's more what you routine, said. It's just routine, routine and like we know what works for us. Yeah. And yes, you could probably change things up and you'd eventually fall into that routine and yeah. be fine, but why change it if, change if it, it works? It's Speaking to the routine, I was gonna say like, because I was alluding it, it'd be more routine rather than superstitious. Yeah. Like, have you ever broken it and still had a good game? Or yeah, never so broken that, it? that's the thing. Like, if you've broken it and you had a good game, you don't even think about it. But if you broke it and you had a bad game, then you really then you realize, realize yeah, yeah. you're like, oh, that's why. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so silly. Like it yeah. doesn't actually mean anything. It's so, yeah. yeah, that's so funny. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. It's just one of those weird things a lot of yeah. players kind of do. Do you try and like? Is is there a thing for in terms of you staying hydrated? Like, do you drink yeah. a certain amount of water a day? Yeah, or? so I pump water. I pump mm. water, on, especially on game day. But yeah. um, a couple of days before the game, I'm my, I'm always making sure I'm pumping the water. Mm, yeah. um, probably three liters at least, at least three okay. liters. Yeah, so I was gonna say, to what, do you drink it by like the liter? Or are you drinking to like the piss check, like clear yeah. piss? Yeah, well, that, that always if I'm not pissing clear before at least two hours before the game, I'm starting, wor- I'm starting to get worried. So yeah, okay. I, I carry, carry like a yeah, 1.5. 1.4. I have a rule of thumb I live by. I give myself one yellow piss a day, yeah. which is the piss <laughs> when I wake up. When you wake up. Yeah. Every yeah. other piss has to be clear. Has to be clear. Yeah. If it's not, I've failed. I've, I heard something about um, it's good It's good like for you, like, you gut and that just making sure you cleared out so that mm-hmm. yeah i mean but just being hydrated is so good for you yeah. like water's other than like oxygen and breathing water is pretty much the like next thing that we need well people there's i think there's stuff like and i know nothing but people talk about over hydrating so in yeah, terms yeah, of like yeah. you just like being like, like being clear yeah. my argument towards that is like how many people on the planet are actually over hydrated right. yeah. let's be honest so think i would rather teach i would rather tell someone to piss clear yeah than to some, oh, make sure you don't overhydrate. Like that's so unlikely. I think the way like we live our lives is, especially you, like Mm. you're just so active that I don't think I could drink enough water to be overhydrated. My job, my job, the post, I'm doing so, I'm sweating so, I I sweat so much out because I'm running up hills and stuff like that. Mm. And then I go to training, like, like, I need to be drinking water. If I don't drink water, literally, like. We were talking to um, like a, a guest and we were talking about hiking. Um, we we're talking about pack weights that yeah. we'll carry because both of us will carry like when we hike we'll carry like see I admire, I admire you guys for hiking man like that's 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 mental resilience I find because mm-hmm. I remember in year 89 camp stuff like that we had to we had to do hikes carrying backpacks mate I couldn't like I battled like yeah, that was yeah, that was yeah, tough. it is a grind yeah mm, but again it, it speaks to like what you could relate to is like if we love it yeah you yeah, love it then we'll you, yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah 100% um and we're talking about pack weights and he was saying that um Shout out Sam. He was talking about how he carries like ten kilos, and we we're like, no, nah, we're like, we carry Sam. like twenty. Sam Oz. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we were talking about how we carry like twenty five plus kilos, and he was shocked. Like, and and he was saying you need to carry ten percent of your body weight. Yeah. So for me, that's like nine kilos. Nine kilos. Yeah. And then, wait, what? No, it's not. It was nine. It's like twelve kilos. You twenty kilo pack. <laughs> He's uh, and he was saying like that, and then um, shit, lost my train of thought. That <laughs> me. No, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was saying you got to carry ten percent, and Josh was like, I carried ten percent in in water. Yeah, like yeah. we carry like I carry like eight yeah. liters of water from hiking. Hike. Well, yeah. like an like an overnight hike. Overnight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's like if I know I'm going to be somewhere for more than twenty four hours, I'm yeah. carrying like eight liters. What happens if one of my bottles break? Right. Like. 100%. I also just pump water. Yeah, I drink so much water. And I'd if I was going to sacrifice anything, it's not the water. Nah. <laughs> it's a blanket or something. Yeah, yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Like you just gotta have, you just gotta have the water. Yeah. Okay. What do you take with you when you hike? Do you- so oh, I pretty much like I run through my pack list roughly. So I have ten sleeping mat, sleeping bag, pillow, that sleeping stuff. I'll have like six and a half liters of water usually. Yeah. Um, 
I have like a little portable gas stove, like the really small ones yeah. um, with the tiny little pot and pan. And then food, food depends how many days yeah. I'm hiking for, but usually I'll, the max I can carry or have carried is like four or five days worth of food. food yeah. um, and then clothing, I just have what I wear and then just sleeping clothes, yeah. which will be like thermals, a puffer jacket, a beanie and some like thermal pants or something. Yeah. Yeah. And then like a journal, accessories, like a life straw. Yeah. Um, Lighter. Lighter just first aid kit etc yeah. that kind of stuff compass. camera compass do you take compasses no i don't depends on yeah. where you go pretty much every every i've ever hiked has been like trails just yeah, pretty trails clear pretty i've never like bush bash hiked bush, yeah. which i would love to do yeah that'd be mad i reckon yeah, yeah have you seen mm -hmm. the guy on youtube geo wizard i haven't okay to, you tell me some stuff i've got to make sure i get onto it yeah mm. oh this is like a waste of your time but it's just funny <laughs> it's this i think he's english or scottish i don't know something yeah and um he does these challenges where he tries to cross countries in a straight line. So he goes straight like line. on like topographic maps and like builds his route where he thinks it's going to be the easiest. Yeah. And he basically, to get a gold medal, I think he can't go 50 meters either side, either side yeah, to get like see. silver, it's a hundred oh, and like bronze is like 200. So he'll be walking and then it's just like, there's just a house and it's like- He has to walk through it? Oh, he'll either like walk through it or just walk around or there's, say there's like a massive wall in front of him, but the wall's like 50 meters wide. He'll like climb, climb over it so he can get the gold medal. <laughs> and like, yeah, they're on YouTube. And I think he's done it's it across too. like Scotland, uh, <clears throat> England. So there's, I'm just I, like in my head, just started getting all like the, the challenges, you, like hit mountains. Yeah. People's property, Rocks. like yeah, people's yeah. property, uh, like government property, a hospital. So uh, what water. about water? Yeah. Dude, how big is a skyscraper? Good luck climbing that. Yeah. Like, so funny. <laughs> Mostly he's in the country and stuff. City. No, but what happens if you hear yeah. the city by chance? Well, you see, but it, it's his planning. Around. It's yeah. his planning. Yeah. Oh, so he makes sure this. But it's there's still so many times where he's resistance. he was on someone's property, like on someone's farm, and the farmer was like tending to the farm. So he's like hiding in the bushes, just waiting for this guy to go. So he can keep walking straight. <laughs> you seen that guy running like 100Ks? Ned Brockman? Yeah. yeah Across Australia? We're, we've been watching him the whole time. What Wild, savage. hey. He's a monster. <laughs> oh, I couldn't believe yeah. it. I wonder what o'clock today. Talk about mental resilience. Yeah, yeah. he's, he's, he's Like reading his captions as well, where he speaks yeah. about like where your mind will go, like your body will just somehow follow. Oh. And he's like, I'm was, on every day I'm on death's mm, door yeah. and it's just it's he's like every day I'm on the edge and somehow yeah. I just keep making it. What's insane he was saying like like give your mind give like it's about like what your mind body I think it was yesterday he said this it was like give your body it's like give your give let your mind give your body a little bit your body will give a little bit back mm -hmm. let your mind give your body a lot and your body will give you a lot back and that's after he clocked like I think it was like 70 and then the next day he only did 30 like less than a marathon and then the next day he did 100 Mate, that's like with footy like i reckon most of it's just mental like yeah mm. there's times on the field you're like i'm so so gone right mm. now but the good players like obviously like in a real i reckon the best players are the ones that can battle 100 percent. Mm. yeah and and it's down to like it's it, i feel like this is across the board and we've talked about it before just hard things like for a footy player the average footy pa player they're there because they love playing footy yeah so playing footy isn't the hard part it's, it's yeah. about when you come off the field yeah. so it's like at home like what's your home life like what's yeah. your training program like what's your yeah. eating like you know you, you just play the all those you, little things mm. it's every aspect in life like you're mm. sleeping all the, the hard bit. things the things that suck mm. yeah. and that's what's going to make play like differentiate great players from just good players and like players, nrl players and obviously to make it to the nrl you have to be great yeah. But you have like great the Jonathan Thurston's, the Darren Lockyer's, yeah. like yeah. all these great players. Uncommon amongst yeah, yeah, uncommon yeah. men. It's like the, those guys, I'm sure, nail every aspect of their life. Yeah. And there'd be areas where they lack and always trying to get better. But for the most mm -hmm. part, they're like just sound across the field. And like that seems to be something you premeditate and you're already like accomplishing with your circle. Yeah, your still got work to do, but... Yeah, yeah sure. time. Yeah. yeah, it is a bit of a weird state as well as we're admiring what you've done so far. Yeah. But you haven't... You haven't yeah, completed. For you, it's like you just you're just scratching the surface. Now it's you, you've hit yeah. step one. Now it's you've got three steps ahead of That's you. That's the thing. I got so much so much work I got to do still. Mm, but it is it is. Uh, I'm sure it is good to reflect on it and be like, what have I done well, and what can I carry forward? Yeah. Like that I've done really well, and what's helped me. I remember when I like just like just after I signed this contract I've got now. Mm. I remember sitting there like, and I just took a moment just to appreciate like mm. how far I've come. Yeah. But then I was then after that I was like. I've got so much further to keep perfect spot to be in I reckon I, I obviously I don't know but in terms of just being able to balance like yeah. 
I've got so much work to do and I need to put my like nose to the grindstone, but I've also got to look back on what I have done and appreciate it. Yeah. Because I feel like if you didn't look back and appreciate, you're just going to burn yourself out. 100%, 100%. Yeah. That is such a great mindset though. I feel mm. as though so many people just wouldn't do that. They would mm. just sign the contract and go out to the pub and celebrate or whatever. But the fact that you can sit there reflect and I had like happy tears gratitude. man oh, I was yeah. like happy tears yeah no what doubt. was it like no was it did they tell you or did it just like is it a phone call first yeah. oh yes yeah, so we had a couple like a couple of meetings and that and then um yeah we had to meet up and sort it all out and then yeah. so like mum came with me and that and it was so cool so when was the when was the moment like you you knew you were getting an NRL contract or yeah, whatever uh, was, top 30 or whatever it that is. was pretty cool like I was I remember I just um like, I didn't know I was getting it until actually, like, I didn't, for me, I didn't want to make, like, until I signed. Mm, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. That's, what, that's, what but that's when I, like, you know, you it was solidified. It kind of didn't hit me until mm. I signed it. I was like, oh, wow. That's why I well, it. Yeah, well, because I guess it's a physical, like, it was ta um, tangible, yeah. sorry, because it was like, maybe they told yeah. you and then, like, you actually went to sign it. Yeah, and wow. then, for me, like, I remember driving home and I was just, in my mind, like, wow, this is so cool, but then. Um, like I couldn't tell many people because I hadn't, I had, for me, I had to, like, I had to make sure I talked to the roosters and the coaches and that to make sure that, like, just to make, like, give them the courtesy of letting them know that I was moving on. Yeah. Mm. For me, that was important, just making sure mm. everything was handled on the right note. Like, and I guess that comes from a selfless place in terms of not burning your bridges, yeah. in terms of they did a lot for you, so you don't want to. And 100%, I was still, at, I was still at the club for the rest of the year. And, yeah. Mm. Um, and like they've done so much to me, so I owe them that at least that, that respect. That, respect, that yeah. respect. And it's also the reality with footy where it's so common for players to jump around clubs. Yeah. So the, like the odds are you ending up there. Like it might happen at some point. Yeah, well, my mind's just the Bulldogs. Yeah, 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 yeah for yeah, sure. Yeah. That's what I've committed to. So mm. um, again, that's but that's something that's yeah. admirable as well. Yeah. Yeah. Once once I've committed to it, they they've given me the chance, so I want to mm. do everything. Again, it comes back to respecting like they they've devoted time and effort into you for those two years and you're going to give it back and it's going to be a mutual thing yeah, you're going to give it hopefully stay there longer we'll see how we yeah, go yeah mm. 100% that's the goal but I remember funny story or pretty pretty nice story to be honest mm. um, I didn't want to tell too many people that when it first kind of happened once once I signed the contract I kind of kept, yeah. kept it pretty quiet but um, my grandma's dad was the president of the Bulldogs League Club back in the day and then no way my her brother was he was down syndrome and he used to be a ball boy for them wow. back oh, in the day so awesome. i called it got him over and then like oh, like put a cap on out no, like no. my granddad he took it off he's like well i'm holding a bulldog that i'm like, i've signed of him <gasps> like, and then it, like, and grandma started tearing oh, oh wow dude. that gives me chill yeah, yeah man it was like look it's such a special moment that's yeah. beautiful yeah like because they're always at my games um that's amazing it was so like it was so like someone i'll hold on to forever that just wow. that moment just to tell them was yeah. that is so awesome. beautiful yeah it was so wow. cool. yeah almost no words for that that's yeah. that's that's what it's about though yeah. right like putting out I had to keep it quiet but for a couple a couple of weeks they struggled to do that yeah 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 <laughs> that was so excited so yeah they were so excited yeah wow. do you pre like think about the challenges that are going to come not necessarily on the field but off like doing media or, like yeah. provided you start playing and yeah. things go well but like things like doing media and having like fans in terms of not Bulldogs fans, like Jake Preston fans. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see if we, once we get to that point. It's kind of something like, I guess you just have to run with. Yeah, yeah. But like for me, I remember when I was a kid, NRL players, they were like, to me, that was like, wow, it's an NRL player. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But you just got to, I don't know, like I'll always give back to the like, kids, you know what I mean? Like mm. they want to achieve, they want to achieve to one day be like us. So, I remember, I remember when I was younger, um, players like Brett Stewart and that, they were just like idols. So mm. and I remember meeting them and they were always, mm. they were always showed like respect in that. So stuff like that sticks with you. And as like, if people are, do one day become fans of me, then I want to mm. make sure they only have good experiences with me. And just, mm. um, in terms of also media, like stuff like that, um, I'm going to, we're going to have to learn, I'm going to have to mm. learn how to deal with it. Um, mm. cause whether you play good, you're going to get good stories. If, you play bad, you get bad stories for sure. Part of the, it's part of the journey, but mm. I don't know. It seems like you're equipped in terms of like, <clears throat> so far your circle and the, the people who help you support you and get through that. It seems like they're, they're not just yes men, but they'll they'll tell you exactly what's happening. You yeah. know what I mean? From an outsider perspective, but knowing you. Yeah, you gotta, you just gotta, you gotta be, you, I'm, almost, I'm almost prepared for what's, 
Yeah. Well, oh, you get, they say you can't be prepared, but I, I know it's going to be like, everything's not going to go how you yeah. want it. Mm. Yes. You know I mean? Yeah, I think that's all you can do, right? Failing to prepare is preparing to fail. Like, mm. if, you're not, if you don't, if you don't expect, you don't want, you don't want that to happen, but if you don't expect it to, when it happens, you're going to, mm. you're going to really struggle. Mm. Yeah. hundred so percent. You got to, yeah, I'm going to have to, media like i'm gonna have to get better at handling stuff mm, with the media and that yeah. but and also like i'm not i'm probably not the best when it comes to like public speaking in that yeah like i'm good like with people and mm. like com- like holding conversations but when it comes to like public speaking and that i, mm. I get terrified it's pretty awesome that you agreed to this no nah, i mean I'm, I, I love stuff like that. I'm, yeah I, i'm easy to have conversations with people but when i get to like in front of heaps of people or well, maybe someone has a maybe microphone in my face yeah well technically you well not many people because no one like we're pretty small but in terms of like you're speaking to people right now it's yeah, just because yeah. you can't see them so like that's what i mean and you're speaking very well i think i think you i don't think you give yourself enough credit in terms yeah. of like it will just be the way like you just look at it i guess in yeah. terms of yeah, maybe it is because it's a fear of course yeah. and you mentioned it before your your pre-game speech was like yeah, was more like, difficult than playing the playing footy and that's game, that's man. that's crazy like yeah. that means it's such a, a big fear for you and that's okay yeah. you know what I mean but yeah. just making sure I, I say the right things and yeah. don't cross the line you know what I mean like mm. I don't know that's probably the it's probably more the fear of saying something stupid or okay yeah um, which is fair enough over the yeah over the fear of actually doing the speaking it's more just making yeah. yourself look like a Mm. yeah which is like there is that side of it but i think people judge too harshly yeah like people look at like joe rogan Mm. for example so many hours of his conversation is on record if if any one of us spoke for however many hours of record there is we're bound to say dumb shit like Mm. it is inevitable he got in trouble a couple weeks or a couple months back with that Mm. yeah it's like it was like and it's stuff like it's got happening people just hold it like with too much weight it's like dude if you if I followed you around for a whole day and had a microphone and recorded, I <laughs> yeah. bet you you're gonna say some dumb stuff. Yeah. So it's like the person who judged you. It's like so you've never said dumb shit in your life. Yeah, yeah, it's insane. But, but that's it, part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. You gotta um, understand it. Yeah. yeah. What do you think about like? Uh, have you heard the saying like you're a product of your environment? Yeah, I have. Yeah. So, given that you necessarily can't choose your environment to the extent where you can't choose what club you go to, like the Bulldogs offered you, you're going there. Yeah. You don't know what that environment might look like. And obviously there will be probably a lot of good things, but maybe there will be some like bad tendencies, whether it's like a drinking culture or drugs or like whatever it is, maybe it's not those things, but I'm sure there'll be some sort of like negative aspect to that environment. What do you think you're going to do to kind of not ensure, but give yourself the best shot at not falling into those things? Yeah. For me, it's just probably just staying focused on my, my job and, like I said, I've I've dealt with stuff like with like missing missing special events because of because mm. of what I want to achieve, and that just pretty much falls into the same thing. Like I'll just try not let it distract me. Yeah. Um, but cool. yeah, there's, there's there's good and bad things everywhere, isn't there? So yeah, nothing's perfect, right? You're gonna you're gonna face some challenges and things that will conflict with your interests. But yeah, drawing back on your experience, I guess like what you're trying to say there is like you've you've done it before, yeah, so. 100%. You know how to go about it. Yeah. Have you have you seen the Last Dance? Uh, I've seen the, just the start of it. I, I haven't watched the whole. Wow. Thing. Okay, you need to. But I yeah. haven't watched. That's something you do need to yeah. watch. Not the <laughs> Geo guy. <laughs> yeah, no, watch the Last watch. Dance, but like Not in, the Geo guy. Sure? <laughs> 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 that sounds pretty sick. <laughs> <laughs> but in it, like Michael Jordan talks about when he first signed with the Bulls, and I think it was one of the first games, and they were in the hotel. Yeah. Like he went up to the room and walked into one of the rooms, and it was just like so many players like drugs drunk like yeah. drinking all of this stuff and he just opens the door instantly was like i'm not here for any of this i'm here to win and yeah. this is not winning yeah. closes the door back into his room yeah. and like oh, the the di- not the discipline like yes for some people they might desire that mm-hmm. stuff but almost the the ability to not conform especially being in a new say, environment and be a sheep yeah, yeah, exactly. And just know what you need to do. And mm. it's why he's one of the greatest players yeah. ever. Yeah, pretty much the greatest. Like, yeah, whatever, the... whatever the temptation is, I feel like in terms of, say, that's the example, like drugs or alcohol. Say that's the yeah. example. It's like, as someone who's devoted, maybe that's not the temptation. The temptation might actually just be like getting the approval of your teammates. Pretty, or, yeah, that's the thing. That's, yeah. the, that's yeah. the tough part. It's not actually the, the act of whatever you're doing. It's getting the, like having that, gap between you and your yeah, teammates yeah, yeah, that'd be the hard thing that yeah that's like 
It's like your first day at school, really, isn't mm. it? You, yeah. you try to prove yourself to everyone. Because mm. you almost have to earn your straps in a way. And I think especially in the sporting culture, it's like you rock up to this team where all these guys have been there for years or yeah. like they've, they've earned their mm. straps. Like you need to go in, yeah. earn your straps and get it done. A lot of people feel that if that culture is heavy, wherever it is, they feel like, oh, that's how I earn my straps by doing mm. this stuff. But it's, yeah. you can like defy the way, you, yeah, you can yeah, defy that and, right, yeah. and rise above that. Yeah. And then other people start to look at that like, damn. Yeah, don't get me wrong. There is times where I'll go, I'll go out and have a drink, like mm. enjoyment. Oh, yeah, oh, sure. no doubt. Yeah. But it, not all the time. Yeah. Mm. And it doesn't even need to be drinking or drugs. It can just be like any Anything. any temptation, whatever it is, if it's something small. Even if it's just big. like diet where, mm. I don't know, you guys have a game in two days and all the boys are going to get like <laughs> massive yeah, Macca's feet yeah, or something. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> that's, that's not going to serve us. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What, what's your go-to though when it comes to like <laughs> dirty, dirty foods? Mate, I'm... I'm a big fan of all of it, to be honest. Yeah, um, yeah. Depends what mood. If I'm hungover after like one of those nights where I enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. One of those like like select few <laughs> nights. Yeah, yeah. Um, probably KFC, but Macca's is always easy, isn't it? Yeah. But then like... Capers. Yeah. But Hungry Jacks isn't bad either. Like, uh, they, all do, they all do serve the job. Yeah. Uh, they, they all do the job. They satisfy the... Yeah. Do you have any like... um? I don't know like how you approach it, but like... Uh, like post season or like post game sort of like treats or like something. How how do you look after? I usually yourself? I usually get like I'll, I'll get a feed like a bit yeah, of dirty yeah, feed yeah, like yeah. solid. I like I like like if, I, if I'm at Macca's it would be like a Big Mac meal with chocolate fish. I love chocolate fish shakes. Like oh yeah, yeah, chocolate milk and chocolate fish shakes. What is my downfall? That's your yeah. what's the right word? Uh, a vice? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's your vice. Yeah. I, like, yeah. I like fish shakes and then caramel, caramel fish shakes stuff like that. Macca's yeah. don't do caramel, but so, yeah. um, that would be my dirty yeah my cheat yeah, meal. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, so that's sort of your treat, like yeah, and it, and it comes in that I didn't even specify food, but you went straight to that. Yeah. yeah. And is it yeah, something yeah. you have to earn for yourself? Like if you lose, will you give that to yourself, or is it only if you've played well and if you've won? You'll yeah, be- oh, I, I'm not gonna lie to you. I probably after every game, I'm gonna. Yeah, Sometimes it's a sad feed. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> it makes me happy, but yeah, it makes yeah. it a bit happier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like, yeah, you gotta you gotta give yourself a reward for like, yeah, we're just yeah. showing up. Yeah, because yeah. you laced up. Yeah, mm. you put the boots on, you it's not so. yeah. like the fact that you're literally running at like a human being. Yeah, just I was talking to mm. Ollie. You mentioned Ollie yeah, earlier. Yeah. earlier. Um, he brought it up the other day. He's like, "This is you actually think of it. These guys are getting paid to just run at the people. It's you don't awesome. actually understand. Yeah, so you don't understand good, like, yeah. like you're saying you don't understand like the actual." physical nature of the sport yeah. oh it is so people physical. not because we're so accustomed to we have two we have three mm-hmm. like there's like rugby union rugby league and yeah. afl yeah. and that, like we're all so used to it but other countries see it like you always see those american reacts yeah, wow, they're they're like wow they're oh my god rugby league yeah, yeah that's yeah. so insane <laughs> yeah and they're it's reacting crazy. to like they don't they're like wait they don't have helmets and shit yeah, yeah like, like there's no padding yeah, like, yeah, a, like a, look a kick off this guy's going full belt, full and belt. Yeah, yeah, just, full belt. i was watching that um because obviously like rugby league that happens every game but like rugby union yeah the other night i saw that the, the wallabies game after a line a drop out you see um who was it uh oh he uh second role wasn't he yeah yeah he's a, he's the second role but the the ab's prop um the group that guy's just a meathead hey and he just he ran straight at him He's like loose head prop, and he put him on. The, he put him. He ate, he ate him. Yeah. He fed him, but like. <laughs> that was his post game feed. He just yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he nailed him in the dirt, and like even the prop, the loose head prop, De Groot, he got up. He was like stunned as you can just tell. But ha- like, how are you getting paid for that? It's insane. Hey? I hope it never leaves. We love it. Like that. I love that aspect yeah. of it. Do you like the the rule changes and the way? I don't know which way rugby league's going, but like how they like remove shoulder charges and. It seems to be that they're almost caring for the players' like longevity a yeah. bit more versus the entertainment aspect, which is yeah. I think is great in terms of you should look after these people. Like, but mm. what's what's your take on that? Like, and then they ban punching it out as well. That's yeah. what, that's the initial. Thought yeah, like what, what's your take? Um, as a fan, I can understand. Like, I love I love seeing that stuff. Like, yeah, yeah. like when I was younger, watching Origin, and the boys were sucking into it or big shoulder <laughs> charge. Like, that's what you love. That's yeah, what you yeah, love. Yeah. But I can understand why the NRL have done it for. Obviously, for you, the player. Do you like that as a player, or do you would you like to? Uh, it, dep- it depends. If I'm getting punched, I don't like it. But yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 if yeah. I want to put a big shot on and accidentally shoulder so- charge someone and and then get done for it, it's kind of frustrating. But I can, mm. I can in terms, I'll, I'm sure down the line, I'll appreciate that the NRL has done that. 
for sure uh, like, like post career you'll be like oh mm. and i can understand why they have like Definitely. it makes complete yeah. sense i think you worded that very well it's like there's two aspects to it there's the player's longevity in there health but then there's also the entertainment value that's the thing well I'm, yeah. I'm a player but i'm also a fan of the game yeah, so, so you have kind of, minds. for me like yes i can like i like it that's gonna like mm. keep me safe but then i also like the aspect of the entertainment like it's it's good to watch let's be real everyone enjoys watching oh, the yeah. stuff that's yeah it's so entertaining like mm. steve menzies oh sorry uh steve maddow steve maddow remember just, you used to yeah, shoulder charge dude. people yeah Far out. What and you- like i'm a like i always played rugby union never played yeah. league and like always watch rugby union but i can admit that like rugby league is far more entertaining yeah. um especially for someone who doesn't what you don't think i believe that <laughs> yeah i don't think no, you believe that he's like, he, <laughs> he loves you he always talks shit on me no, listen 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 <laughs> i'm just saying <laughs> all right now he's admitted it on the podcast yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. no it's coming from i'm talking shit when i say that like and i have said this before it's like rugby league is so much more if you were to just be like not see both sports and go and watch both of course rugby league is way more entertaining it's just all you're giving each other is 10 meters just run each other and belt yeah. like that is that's so entertaining to watch yeah, yeah. um but yeah, it's it's such a great game. I hope I hope it never on your point of the rules. I hope it never loses a physical aspect. Yeah, like it doesn't diminish it much further. Yeah, well, I think it's in a pretty good spot right now. To mm. be honest, I think it's and you just but you just never know in terms of science and how we'll evolve in terms of concussions and like what will like society push onto these sports and I don't think it ever will because it's something so primal in us that loves and how you were talking about all the I guess beef and then shoulder charging and stuff the primal aspect probably one of the most um most loved sports right now is UFC mm, MMA and you think think of it it's just one person going against one person like it's, it's it is primal yeah, it's just gladiators back to when we were like like uh, like how far back I don't know yeah but that's literally what we're made to do it's in our genes to it's in our DNA to enjoy it yeah. like my my partner like she doesn't watch any sport she's not sporty at all but yeah. she'll she loves the UFC yeah like if she watched it she'll know names now like you're saying full, boxing like this yeah 100 percent. one of my one of my mates said to me in like 50 years or 100 years like do you think we'll look back on MMA and that will be like modern day gladiators, just like humans fighting each other to the death. Like, will we look at that as like, what the hell were they doing back yeah, then? Like, yeah. Have you seen the Suck Russian guys? Dude. Have you seen the Russian yeah. videos of them in like phone booths and stuff? Yeah, 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 phone yeah, yeah. Booth, yeah. yeah. And like, car, they were in a car. <laughs> 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 the videos, of, it's like three on three. Yeah. yeah. Have you, oh, have you guys see that stadium shit? Where they did like a hu- like hundreds on hundreds. Oh my it was like it was like full like a gladiator. Got a lot of stuff to catch up on. I'm gonna watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got a long list. Uh, wow. I think it was on Bisming's podcast. He was talking about it, and it was like it was in Russia or something. Yeah, of course, it was of in course. Russia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes it. Where, where else would you be able to do that? It's just like a football field. Yeah. And it's just like 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 all these little dots being people and just oh, and they're just like fighting. It's just Proper like brave hearts. How would you yeah. know? How would you know? Like. Who's yeah, who's on your fucking <laughs> team, bro? Yeah, like, just go it. That's it. wild. So funny. But yeah, no, I don't think it ever will. I think Dana was actually talking about that after uh, yesterday. He was they were talking about time after he's gone, and he's like, "This business will never die." Now that it's been set up, it's like, nah, it's I fun. think he knows it's so primal in us yeah. to enjoy. I don't think rugby league will leave after. No, because it's physical. Yeah. I think the, the the most physical sports will never die. Yeah. Like the more physical. Yeah. And I just think it'll change. Like yeah. it, everything's it always changing. Yeah. If you look at the game. It, in the in the eighties, it's completely different to what it is now. But yeah, it's just blokes. Who, like, every, like a couple of blokes had beer guts back in the day. But now yeah. it's like you look at it. It's cool though that people can do it as a career. Because mm. back then, the fact that they played and every like mostly everyone had to have a job because they weren't insane. making much that's money from that. They were pretty much part time. Yeah. Mm. That's wild. But it's mm. so cool that like you can play NRL and yeah. like finish mm. and be quite well off. Yeah. It's a cool yeah. thought. In all that's sports. Goal, yeah, goal. it's it's great that mm. like they do that for athletes. Because yeah, there is that entertainment value. Like, so many Australians love rugby league. People benefit off it, don't they? Like, yeah. yeah. It's a business. It like, yeah, 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 it's great. Like, it speaks to the entertainment and then employees, you know what I mean? There's also a business that branch off it with, like, gambling. and. 100%. Yeah, other people benefit. Yeah, Definitely. Mm. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah. That's so sick. Yeah. It's, like, it's still surreal to think... Because I'm, I still look at like NRL players as like heroes. And yeah, just, as in like I look at them and I'm like, but dude, you have a contract. Are you sitting in my fucking car. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> the thought so of like bad. tackling one of those guys, <laughs> dude. Oh, <that> <laughs> well, you could, you could. Oh, just so yeah, it says scary. you. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, you don't know that. Yeah. Does that scare you at all? Like, or are you just tackling, like tackling these massive guys? Nah, nah man, I love it. Since he's looking so at you, sick. like, you serious? Yeah, you serious? Yeah, yeah no, nah, it's nah. 
I love it. That's so yeah, cool. That you, dude, that is such a mental block in my mind. <laughs> really? Yeah, the thought of like... Well, you played footy as a kid a little bit. Yeah, didn't you? but the thought of like people my age playing NRL and me like mm, them yeah. Bro- yeah. yeah, so it's like say you guys switched out. Yeah. Like as in like you could uh, technically, like you're the same age, so uh, therefore you're capable of playing. Yeah, so you're yeah, like, yeah. imagine me there. Like, it sounds weird, but the day after a game, I love waking up and the body's just ruined. Like, really? Yeah. I love that. That means I'm like, yeah, I've, I went hard. Yes, you know what I mean? I went like... That's awesome. I went to battle, actually. You know I mean, like, it's just... Yeah. Because you know you, like, did what you could and, like, you did your best. Yeah. That's sick that it's a week-in, week-out thing as well, I think. Yeah, you clock on every week. Yeah. It's just yeah. Getting, getting yourself right again and then you go, you go again and you just go mm. again. It's just... Mm. I love that part of it. It's yeah. just... So good, man. What, mm. what do you think would matter more to you, like, right now, winning a premiership or playing Origin? Winning a premiership. Yeah. 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 Winning a comp. But... Why? That's the, that's the ultimate that's the ultimate thing you got yeah being a part of a club and mm. completing uh, completing the the ultimate task yeah, which, which is winning a comp yeah it's mm. like it's it's more like that's like a longer task and a more yeah. f- fulfilling journey probably because yeah. origin it's like yes you're playing three games but most of it's an individual effort to get yourself to origin there's a lot of there's a lot of origin players and Australian players that have never won a premiership mm. yeah do you know what I mean like mm. obviously obviously they're both massive dreams like yeah yeah of course massive yeah, obviously I want to do both but mm. yeah if winning you have a, one yeah, yeah winning yeah. a comp would be, yeah because yeah. yeah. the consistency the hard work also I think having that team work and that camaraderie mm. just elevates the win yeah. so much more yeah. if you're able to like play what 24 games whatever it is yeah. it's becoming 27 next year 27 20, really? 27 rounds but you get free buy rounds so it'll be 24 okay, games yeah. okay what is it now how many games do you play now um it's 25 rounds but two buys so 23 okay so, so it'll be an, an extra, extra game. game yeah next yeah, year interesting yeah tw- an extra well because there's another team yeah what's the Dolphins, team again dolphins, dolphins that's yeah. right because i was gonna say how could they make that work yeah. like adding one game that makes mm-hmm. no sense but you've got another team in the comp and an extra buy that's yeah, exciting. Yeah. That's cool that they've added a team. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty. That's n- how's that happened in our lifespan? Am I dumb? Um, Gold Coast, two Titans. Two Titans two were when seven. we were young. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. I, I don't remember. Yeah, it, we like, don't remember yeah. that shit. Yeah. yeah. Are there any coaches that you would love to play on? I'm, I'm really excited to. Cameron Serrato will be my coach. Yeah, okay. He's coming across from Penrith, who's under like he's an assistant coach. Penrith right now. Okay. Under Ivan. Clear. So it's his debut year coaching the dogs. This will be first his first year being a head coach. That's so, cool. But he's he's highly rated and um mm. I look forward to working under him. So yeah, he's he's probably the one, obviously, right now. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Well and, and it's cool to see you got your mind on that. Yeah, you're you so you're so yeah. focused on the dogs. Yeah. That's honestly so that. sick to see. Yeah, that's very impressive. Nah, mate, they've given me my opportunity. I've got, got to repay the faith, you know what I mean? Like Yeah. Mm. They've given me the chance to do, hopefully achieve my dream, so I've got to make sure I get work them. for them. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. That's, that's so sick. Yeah, hundred percent, man. That's mm. mine. Mine's just I'm bulldog now, mate. That's, yeah. that's what I'm going for. That's what yeah. I go for. That's who I'm playing for. So everything will be mm. bulldogs from from November one. Yeah. yeah. And what's what's the journey to training look like? To the dogs. Yeah. Because um, that's like Bankstown, right? Yeah. So I was thinking about possibly moving over there, but my my girlfriend doesn't really want to move out there. So yeah. Um, I'll have to drive, so I think it's about 50, 50, to an hour, 50 minutes to an hour. But could be worse. Yeah, but it uh, depends on the time of day. It could be yeah, up to an hour and a half. Say, it so could be longer if you. You know what it's like going out through Macquarie and all that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll have to probably get up early. And get so up. considering that's like that'll be a lot of your time then if you end up driving. Like, do you do anything whilst you drive? As in, like, listen to a podcast yeah, or listen to potties. One hundred percent. I pump potty podcasts. Um, yeah. Because I guess that's good use of your time, right? It's like you could you could just blame the like lack of time for like driving for up to maybe three hours, depending on what time, like round trip three hours. What that's podcast it. do you listen to? Um, so it shows how much of a, a I'm actually a rugby yeah. league nerd, eh? Like so, yeah. just uh, have you heard of Bloke in a Bar? Yeah. yeah. And then like Hello Sport, have you heard of Hello Sport? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, I probably got to get into more like podcasts that actually. I get stuff out of. Yeah, like personal uh, the mental yeah, development. I, yeah, yeah. I, I want to and I have to. Mm-hmm. But to me at the moment, going to training, it's kind of my relaxed time. So I just yeah, kind cool. of put it on. Put on a but it's it's still investment in yourself because like you, yeah. you're getting, you're surrounding yourself in the game and like yeah. it's going to benefit you. Because if you've got podcasts you recommend. Yeah, dude, I was going to say I'll send you a bunch. Because yeah. Um, I, yeah, I want to want like stuff that's going to, yeah. I'm going to benefit from. No, definitely. I'll, I'll send you a bunch yeah, that you'll yeah. get value out of for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, is there anything you want to talk about? Any questions you want to ask us or? 
You know, anything um, you want to say? No. Nah, what, what's your like? What's your guys' goals? That's that's what I'm actually interested. Yeah. in. We always get asked this now because we're so pressing when we're <laughs> telling enough. people. Yeah. Um. Uh, I'd say, and it changes every time, and I love the fact that it changes every time for me because yeah. there's no one interpretation. Like yeah. that reflects where I am at the moment. I think we've just started this within the last, like, it's been kicked off for the last six months. Yeah. Um, but at the moment, it's just to like finance, make this financially viable, so I can yeah. do other things that benefit. Like, like yeah, at this point in time, like I have no like self-created wealth, so yeah, yeah. I want to create that wealth through something I love doing, and yeah. this is such a we just, I just don't shut up. So like, I love talking. So this is just perfect. And I'm, uh, I'm speaking for Josh as well, but we're both very, very curious. Yeah. Um, and we've known each other for so long, came together to do this. And like, this is something I'm like really passionate about. And I just want to continue this and take it as far as we can. Yeah. Um, you and you will, you guys both seem like you really love it. Yeah. Yeah. And ultimately I guess it's like try and benefit others and live a more selfless life as yeah. best as possible. And fortunately, unfortunately, like if that requires some wealth, um, and that can really, well, it doesn't always require wealth, but you can do a lot more if you have a little yeah, bit more wealth. It's just more opportunity. Yeah, there's more There's more things you can do. Um, and I'd love to be able to create a wealth to then therefore make that sort of the way yeah, I operate yeah. my life. But in the medium term, it's like nose to the grindstone with this. Yeah. Um, but I've got to earn money in between as well. So just, just working on the side just for financial viability. And then now it's just like every time I can spend time doing this and yeah. keep growing my relationships for my personal life and link the two. Yeah, that's it yeah. for me at the moment. Pretty much Pretty like the well. same, just putting in the reps. Yeah. Mm. I think, like we're not even at step one, Everything and hundred percent, man. And we're 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 very committed to like if this took us ten years, yeah, yeah, we're here for sure. Because yeah. it's so like selfishly, I get so much out of doing this. Mm. Like, yeah. a I get so much knowledge. It's also a great networking hack. Like, you yeah. just meet so many people through doing this, and yeah. you mm. have such a good relationship with them because you have such an intentional conversation where we go home. I'm not going to see you for a long time you're not going to see me for a long time (laughs) but we know a lot about each other and it's also we have that contact because the last time we hung out it was a really meaningful experience so that is just an amazing thing i love getting out of it also it's just it's nice to build something that's your own i really like that i i don't hate working for the man but it's so much nicer just building something that's purely Mm -hmm. yourself like waking up being like if i don't edit today no one's going to do it for me And and also i can't point the finger yeah, yeah I can't else. blame it. There's no excuse. Yeah, it's back it's back it so itself. it's so nice having that responsibility and that yeah. almost healthy pressure on myself to do this. Whereas like when I was a mechanic working for the band, like I was just doing cars every day and yeah. for my boss, like money in his pocket. And yes, I'm getting paid for that. But like, I, he's benefiting exactly. And it's like, it's cool to see his passion for the business because yeah. it's his and he wants to grow it. Yeah. And it's like, I like, I want that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what I want. And it's funny because, again, like I said, we do get asked this a lot now. And, like, every time, like, he'll say something. I'm like, oh, yeah, true, me too. Yeah. Like, it's because we, but that speaks to us aligning yeah, a lot. Linked, yeah, you're yeah, yeah. And, like, that man yes. thing is, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but just having that link is, that's so good. And, yeah. like, um, wanting to just, yeah, create something that's my own. And I've, I've sort of, like, um, developed that since leaving school. I've started to understand. It's like, okay, I don't get frustrated when things are out of my control, but I do. Like, if it's yeah. something's not in my control, I get annoyed because I think it could be better. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people just look at that and go, well, I could have done that better and not do anything about it. For me, it's like, I'm going to put myself in a situation where, like Josh said before, there's no one else to blame but myself. And then there's no excuse. Um, and I love that about this. So yeah. You guys will achieve good things if you just keep going. Yeah. Keep keep putting in the reps, man. man. Consistency. Like the things we celebrate are the reps. So when we're celebrating something, it's because of it's 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 putting in the reps so say like we reach a certain milestone in terms of episodes like yeah. dude i i could not tell you how many people listen to our pod i'm not kidding yeah. like we barely yeah. ever look at the views yeah. like, it's like it's just like we we've co- clocked like 26 episodes the other week and that's like six months of yeah. releasing one every week and it's like dude we've been putting in the reps for six mm-hmm. months and i love that so but you're enjoying the journey 100 eh? yeah. man the journey's the best part yeah. it's because yeah. there's no destination for me it's just like what we're doing so this is what i'm enjoying and the yeah. come up is really fun i love the uncertainty in oh are we ever going to make money from mm-hmm. this are we ever going to be able to like support ourselves yeah. through this i love that uncertainty yeah. because once you have it it's such a comfortable safety net where you can mm-hmm. be like oh Oh, I'm I all did good. It, I did it. Thank God. But I love just like, oh, I'm going to get there. Yeah, and I love being comfortable with and confident in my ability to get there. Yeah. Like, I love that. And having someone to bounce off definitely benefits. Like, yeah, and having the exact sure. same 
vision because if you're like everyone gets down it's like the other person's always there to bring you up yeah um yeah. that's your circle yeah yeah no it's Definitely. so good man um i think to wrap up we do like a challenge of the week every week so no worries, pretty good. much um <laughs> if we have a guest on we get them to think of a challenge it can just you take your time but usually it's something orientated around what we've been speaking about it can be anything random and it's for us to carry out either like just one day or throughout the week of when the episode will be released. Well, you guys, you guys train, don't you? You're already yeah, trained. yeah. No, Not as much as you, but yeah. No, yeah. You both look physically fit. You sick fuck. If we were, if we did train as much as you, I want you to go for a surf one time this week. Ooh, sick. That's an interesting one. Never surfed in my life. Well, and yeah. try, dude, that's so cool because yeah. I've I've been learning to surf and yeah. the mate I'm going with will. Twice we've been in the ocean and he said we have to get Kyle out here. Mate, yeah. the ocean is so good for your mental health. Uh, 100%. So good. Yeah. I can't. And we all know that from living on the beach. That's so yeah. weird that you said that yeah. because he's act- like literally last week he was like, dude, we have to get Kyle out here. Yes. And Will has a board for you. Like, he- That's awesome. There, there you go. we go. Make sure you do it. You set me up. Uh, all right. <laughs> That's a good way to wrap it up. Sweet. Thank you for yeah, coming yeah, on, man. Thanks, thanks for having me. And we're keen to have you again and see like your journey Very progress if you want yeah. like yeah yeah, yeah dude yeah keen to uh can you see how your season goes and yeah it's gonna be awesome Good. best of luck to you actually not luck you don't need luck you don't need luck You've just keep putting in the reps man 100%. like you're getting it done i appreciate you guys having me on yeah no, awesome. our pleasure thanks boss signing out 2g1c laters <laughs>